Good morning, everybody. Um, we're just about 10 o'clock now, so thank you ever, ever so much for joining us on, on today's webinar. Um, so today we're going to uh, talk about how to control your profits and learn about how to get some better controls in place on that, um, how you can get a better grasp of your business, achieving your business and lifestyle goals. But, you know, just, just ask yourself the questions, what are your business aspirations? Um, do you have goals or targets in place? How do you measure your progress? And how can we move you on to the next level? And, and today we're going to be talking about all those things and also how you can obtain that knowledge. Um, just before we get into full flow, just a, a little bit of housekeeping, I'm afraid, a bit of boring bit. So, um, so just to make sure that you've got the, the best audio and visual experience, can you just quit all your other applications, um, come out of anything else that may be competing for bandwidth, um, such as websites, Skype, email, etc., because that might be affecting your audio. Um, and just be aware that if you just close the windows, these applications may still be running, running in the background, so it's always best to quit them entirely. And if you've also got stuff going on in the background, like Dropbox, for example, just pause the syncing for the duration of the webinar just to make sure that um, you can see and hear clearly. Um, on your screen you'll have a go to webinar control panel. Um, so within that, if at any point you want to ask a question, you can um, just type your question in that box um, and press send and we'll try and um, answer any questions towards the end of the webinar. You can also collapse and expand the control panel by using the directional, directional arrow. So if it is blocking your view, just, just collapse that and then you can expand it if you want to ask a question or, or access that in any way. Um, if you do navigate away from the presentation or can't find the control panel, just look for the, the DAISY icon, the GoToWebinar DAISY icon, and then that should get you back to where you need to be. Just by way of introduction, for those who don't know me, uh, my name is uh, Richard Suswain and I'm a partner in Tyrrell & Company. have been so for 20 odd years, which is a fair old shift. Um, looking rather youthful on that photo there, but um, I think I've aged considerably since. Um, so as I say, Tyrrell & Company, we're a firm of accountants, we're based in Cambridge. Um, very enthusiastic about using uh, technology to solve headaches for small businesses. Um, and as a result, we've been very fortunate to, to win awards for, for doing that sort of thing. Um, as I say, I've been a partner for over 20 years, and these days I spend a lot of my time um, looking for solutions to help um, small businesses. Um, I think we're in a, an age now where there's plenty of affordable tools out there um, for people to take advantage of. I'm delighted to be joined on today's webinar by Darren Glanville, another youthful uh, photo of Darren Glanville there. Um, Darren is the UK Sales Director of um, Spotlight Reporting and I'm delighted he can join us today. Hello Darren, how are you doing? You okay? Uh, thank you very much, Richard. Good morning, everyone. Yes, I'm, I'm very well, and, and thank you very much for pointing out that that's a very youthful-looking photograph. <laughs> uh, it's not so youthful that you didn't see my mullet from the late 70s, early 80s, <laughs> the Irish days, but thanks very much. Really pleased to be here. Excellent. Thank you. I mean, did, did you want to get, um, just give the audience a little bit of background about yourself and a little bit about um, Spotlight Reporting, just by way of intro? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just just to give people a little bit of a, a pressy about myself, I've I've been working with um, software for over uh, twenty years. Hence the uh, the phrase. I'm I'm a little bit more follically challenged now, um, and most of that time has been really working with small businesses and accountants in practice to do two things. Really, one is is to really help accountants and uh, and small businesses embrace the technology that now exists and how that's rapidly changed over the last. Uh, 20 years, and so my first forays to working with accountants and their clients came in in 1997, just after the the, the introduction of self-assessment tax returns. Um, through to now, having worked with organisations such as Sage, um, such as Zero as well. I used to work for uh, for Zero in the UK before taking on the role of, of director of sales for Spotlight Reporting in the UK. And what we've we've seen is a massive transition. I'm sure you'll cover this later. But there's been a massive paradigm shift in small businesses and their advisors and accountants using technology better and moving um, from the traditional desktop model, which was was always seen as as, as the, the weapons of choice, uh, to a now much more disruptive model because now we can get access to information at much greater depth 
um, but also um, much more instantaneous and, and th just simple things to help the lives of small business owners such as automated bank feeds and the ability to, to capture information um, from um, simple things like receipts and have that coming into our accounting system so minimizing data entry but speeding up uh, the, the, the amount of information for, for clients to understand their numbers and taking that to an, another level is you know how can technology then help them to get paid faster and reduce their debt to days and that's something I know you've been working on very heavily with your program of the zero trifecta and I think the final part of that with, with us at Spotlight is really to, to allow those, those business owners to get much more deeper insights and a lot more context around where their business is going and the outcomes that they want to achieve and why they should be working much more deeply with you as their advisors that's the part that we bring to the table so it's much more deeper business information you know KPIs benchmarking understanding numbers visually and I think that's a, that's a very important thing is it's about turning something that can be quite something that's very opaque into something that's very clear but again allowing you to provide some really awesome advice to your clients that's what we do at Spotlight yeah, absolutely. I mean, fascinating stuff. And we'll look at a bit more of the visual aspects um, further on in the presentation because quite often when we present figures to our clients, it's, you know, they glaze over a little bit. So when you can present information in a much more dynamic or visual way, it, 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 has much, it carries much more impact. So fascinating stuff. I mean, in case you can hear a time delay, people, Darren's up in Newcastle, I'm in Cambridge, <laughs> time delay. It, it, it's like listening we're, we're to not BBC, the other side of the BBC, BBC <laughs> news reporters. Yeah. Um, so if there is a little bit of crossover, do apologise, as I say, we are in different locations. Um, just a, a, as an aside, we've also got Debbie Spooner sitting in the background on um, today's webinar, just in case we have any um, technical issues, which I hope we don't. Um, but just, as I say, if you could just all uh, type something in the chat box, we can just make sure everyone's listening and what have you, and can hear clearly. Yeah. We've got Excellent stuff. Can I just ask a question there? Is, are we are we encouraging questions as we go through, or are we, do we want them at the end? I think we'll, I think we'll cover off the questions at the end. So we'll 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 we'll, we'll, co we'll go through the webinar, and then we'll address any questions at the end. I think that's probably a, in just in case we, could, we we might answer it during the webinar. So I think we'll that's deal with it that way. No problem. So okay, without any further ado, we'll just start off by. Asking three questions. Three questions that all business business owners probably should be asking themselves, but don't do so enough. First one being, what are you trying to achieve in your business? The second simple question is, ask yourself why you're trying to achieve that. And the third question being, how are you going to get there? Because a lot of business owners that we work with, they spend so much time. Um, working in the business rather than working on it, that I don't actually take time out to consider these three simple questions. So it's just to open it, we're just going to look at each of those in a little bit more depth and um, see if we can put some more flesh on that for you. So starting off with what, I mean, I mean Darren, what, I mean, do, you want, do you want to fill in on that one? Are you there Darren? Yes, I'm here. Sorry, I think uh, I should. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. I, I just popped myself onto mute. There was a little bit of background noise coming through, so I didn't want that to disturb the audio. Um, so thanks. I'll, I'll just just put this in a little bit of context for you, if, if that's okay. One of the things that we often come across when we talk to to, to small businesses is is understanding um, a little bit more about where their businesses need to go and what they, where those business, business owners want their business, businesses to, to go. What are the outcomes they're looking to achieve? Now that could be on, on a number of levels, both personally or professionally. This could be something like they, they want to go for an they want to expand their business, they're looking to bring in additional staff, they're looking to bring, introduce additional capital into that business, they're looking to, to, to increase their profits. It could be on from a personal perspective, looking to put their kids through university, pay off their mortgage early, early. maybe even, dare I say it, look at some form of exit strategy for that business. Um, so one of the things that we need to think about is what does that landscape look like? What does the business look like three months from now six months, 12 months, 18 months, what are the plans that people need to put in place around that? 
And I think that's really important because then what, what we can do is, and, and with working and working with you, is put those plans in place and put some measurements around that. And I think if anyone's ever read a book, uh, from great to good. I think it's it's a fantastic product, uh, a book to read. Jim Collins, uh, isn't it? Jim Collins. Jim Collins, it? absolutely. And I think one of the things it looks at is is looking at the the, the big targets. What some people refer to as B hacks. You know, what are your big, hairy, audacious goals? Um, and what we can identify if we, if we look at people like Google. Google have uh, a very very big audacious goal. They just want to be the single source of information and reference for everybody. That's their big ultimate goal. Now they can then break that down into smaller objectives and goals and strategies to enable them. Now something like a, a BHAG is something that is very large, but it's 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 constantly evolving. Um, it's almost so big that it's it's kind of that's the direction that we want to head in. But if we want to keep addressing in that direction, how do we then break that down into smaller goals? So that's when we start looking at what are the what are the smart objectives. That some of those 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 businesses can have. And what are, what's specific about them? How can we measure that? Um, how can we attain that? Is it realistic? And can we put some time restrictions on it or make it time bound? Um, and we end up doing a lot of work through our partners with you. And you know, you, this is something you guys do very well, Richard. Is you you really focus on delivering those smart goals and objectives to to, to fulfil the BHAG. Um, and that's really important for those businesses because then we can start challenging, well, what, what would happen? How are you going to do that if you put a price increase in? And it's about framing the context. So this is all about them understanding where they want the businesses to go. And I think what that then leads into is, well, well why do they need to do this? What are the drivers? Um, is it external? Is it internal? Um, what's happening within their marketplaces that can drive this? Um, what are the key, the key areas of, of growth that we see happening um, and more of the services that we see being demanded by small businesses and their advisors. And typically this then forces into things like KPIs, benchmarking, mentoring, wealth management, that type of advice because it, it addresses all of those key areas. It addresses security, it addresses um, profitability, and it, it addresses the outcomes. The key thing for I think a lot of people, unfortunately, is, is, is they know this is what they need to do. They need to put some clarity around what and what those goals and objectives are and those big, hairy, audacious goals. But then equally break that down into how are we going to measure this? Because again, it's that old adage of, of measurement, manage, and, and, and deal with that. The key for a lot of firms is how do we start to implement that? And that's where we can't impress enough on small businesses to engage with their advisors around this. Um, this is ultimately some strategy that many business owners will have, but sit down with your advisors and really think about how you can achieve this um, through measurement of some of your key performance indicators, because they can be very similar, but equally they can be very um, unique to the business that you're running. So if you just, I think if you advance onto the next slide. Yeah, sure. One of the things that we're seeing across all um, areas of industry is clients who want to be successful, you know, 95% of, of those businesses that interact and, and engage frequently with an accountant slash a business advisor are much more likely to succeed. So it's really important that as advisors we, we don't become complacent. I think again you, you may talk about this later. There's there's this 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 kind of perception from a lot of uh, about a lot of accountants that all we do and all you do is, is compliance, it's accounting tax. And, and that addresses a compliance requirement, it addresses a legislative requirement. Um, and yes, we, we, we get paid for that, but it's, it, we, we've got to deliver more of the services that clients actually value um, because they can see the, the, the true benefit. It's actually helping them on that journey. So what we're seeing a rise of um, is, is, is things like strategic planning and forecasting. I know you're, do, you're working really hard with your clients on that. We're also seeing that you, you're developing better KPI reporting and benchmarking and actually allowing you to say, this is how you're performing against people within the same industry. And that's valuable information for any business is to understand where they're at on that journey. And I always put this, and I think we discussed it a while ago, Richard, it's, it's like driving your car. You know, you can't, you, you're looking through the windscreen, you're not looking in your rearview mirror. And that's the most important thing is we can look forward, we can plan forward, and we can build execution executables around that, whether it's wealth and management. And again, we're seeing a much more rise of business mentoring and coaching. I know that's something that, that Craig and Darren have been working a lot on within your firm as well. No, absolutely. And I think you're spot on, Darren. I think the, the perception of what an accountant accountant's role is has, has evolved. And I don't think um, 
probably a lot of clients realise that we can do a lot more than just knocking out your accounts or your tax return, which is basically just fulfilling government requirement. Um, you know, advisors and accountants, we've got years and years as, of, of working with small businesses and so have built up a wealth of experience. We, we know largely a lot of the time what works and what doesn't work because yes. we've, we've seen it in small business and so we're well placed to help to help businesses on their journeys all the accountants and all the advisors out there because I think we're a very trusted profession um, I think apart from doctors or dentists or something, I think accountants are the most trusted advisors so it's very important to, to, to use your accountants or use your advisors to to use that to use the information that have gathered over years and years of working with small businesses and again uh, on that yeah so again on that slide there, these are the sorts of services that um, we need to be talking about to you know with our clients much more often because these are the things that matter, these are the things that are important, not whether your accounts are filed on time or what happened in your accounts 12 months ago. Let's look forwards and start planning the future, start looking at how you're comparing with your peer groups, start, you know, you've, you've, you've built up wealth within the business, let's start putting in some protection mechanism to make sure you can protect your assets and just helping you with your business and I think that's a much more valuable service and something that we can, you know, actually deliver to clients to, to help them on their journeys. I, th I think that there's another aspect to that as well. I think it, these are these are more of the services. Okay, it's great to deliver these services. I think they're more relevant. Um, I think the protection, security, and you know, looking at forward outcomes is really great. I think one thing I would always say to any small business is, we shouldn't only ever be doing a forecast because the bank needs it. You know, we should. We yeah, should totally. To, 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 to think about where our business is going in, in you know even if it's just a modest increase um, you know what, what would happen if we were to increase revenue by three percent this year what happened what would happen if cost of sales went up by ten percent or expenses went up by ten percent what would what would that financial landscape look for us as a business would it have a positive a neutral or a negative impact and I think that's certainly the stuff that businesses need to work more closely with you on um, as they go forward, but I think it's also this is more of the stuff that you as accountants love working on with your clients. This is the whole purpose, I believe, why many accountants set up in practice is because beneath it all, you want to help people. You know, Absolutely. It, 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 this isn't just about saying, hey, we can fulfill a, a, a legislative requirement um, that is put upon us by the company's house or HMRC. It's about saying, look, guys, we want to position ourselves strategically with you on, on that journey. And I think that's the difference. Um, and I think that's where the value proposition comes in us. But I also see some very interesting things happen with your clients once they start that process as well. I think if we move on to the next slide, there are three impacts this has, I believe, with the clients who adopt this type of process. With is One is that they have a much stronger relationship uh, at various levels. One is that they have a stronger relationship with their advisor. And I think it, it very absolutely comes back to what you were saying. Next to a doctor, you're, you're one, if not the next trusted profession down. And I think that's really important. The, the second thing is if, if we look at this, and I'm not being disparaging to, to solicitors, but solicitors in the legal sector are very much transactional based. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I've always loved about working with accountants is you truly value the lifetime of a customer. Yeah, and I'd you, agree with that. And you really do value the lifetime value with the customers that you work with. Um, it's very rare that I see accountants disengage with clients. Once you work with clients, you, you have them for a very, very long time. There's lots of loyalty there, um, both brand and I think service loyalty. But equally, what we're seeing now is again because we can start surfacing a lot of this information with our, with our clients, um, and for your clients to get this information, they can also then have better relationships with their suppliers and customers, because we can expand this information. You know, we can actually give them visibility about how much they're purchasing from better suppliers, and you know, if 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 they were to buy more from current suppliers, what does that mean in terms of terms, or do they get better better trade terms, or do they get you know the same trade terms, but they may you know as a indirect result get a better trading relationship with the customer or supplier. They're also able to maybe look at their own. Um, data analysis within some other areas as well. I mean, one of the things that we talk, spend a lot of time talking about with our partners, as you know, is one of the features that you have within Spotlight that you guys can offer them is is to analyze their Google Analytics. And you can see, you know, where their sources of referrals are coming from, where their web traffic's coming from, what influencers are coming in from Facebook and Twitter if they're using social. 
So again, we can start to see a lot more dynamic. So it actually improves their client relationships as well as yours. I think the, 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 the two key driving factors for any client working with you in this sense is they're also going to see improved results because why we're we measuring the outcomes that they want. And anything we measure, we can manage and we can plan. It's almost helping you, I think, indirectly shift you from being reactive. And I'm not suggesting that Tyrrell and Company are reactive in any way, by the way, when I say this, because you're very much a proactive accountant. But I think it shifts the perception from clients that you're, you're reactive around dealing with accounts and tax to being much more proactive because you can now spot things happening with the client ahead of time. And it's very much focused on forward looking as opposed to rearward looking. And I think think the key thing here in terms of that is it gives your clients that edge. It gives them a point of difference because they're coming at this with a holistic real world view, if that makes sense. They're coming from yeah. an informed position and I think that's such a powerful position to come from. You know, I've, there's also another book that is called Hope is Not a Method. Um, and it's, it's around what business can learn from the military and, and one of the things that the military employ is every thing they do is, is based on something called an after action report and I think the principle is the same what outcomes have we planned for what actually happened and what are the key learnings and I think that's something that you then bring to the table with your clients yep. I think that's a massive point of difference yeah and again I think looking at things like results I mean you know we can start tracking different elements of the business and actually okay do we focus on carrying on playing to your strengths and, 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 and building what's working well in the business or do you fo or are you of the thinking that okay we've got a few areas of weakness let's try to see if we can build those up but unless you have any of these measurement tools that you to, to manage the business how can you actually tell where you need to be um, putting your focus on the business totally absolutely absolutely so just to um, just before we get into a bit more depth we're just um, uh, a, a short story about a business like yours. I mean, some of the some of the clients that we've been working with uh, have, have benefited from using this sort of um, advice. I mean, we had a client, for instance, in a consultancy business. And like many clients, business was good. Didn't necessarily see the need for any advice um, because he, he was ticking along. He was doing okay. But when asked, he didn't actually know what his business objectives or goals were, which was quite interesting dialogue. So we sat down and worked out what his objectives were. We put a strategy in place. We've broken that down into 90-day plans and quarterly meetings. And of course, because we're now working with current data, which will explain how that all flows through, it's much more powerful to enable him to make the right decisions at the right time. And again, once, you, once you're presented with information like this, you know, using Brad Sugars as, as a you know, Australian entrepreneur as a, an example, there's really only five ways you can grow your business. Um, number of leads, conversion rate, transactions, number, average sale and profit margin. I mean don't get me wrong there's hundreds and hundreds of strategies we, you can put under those main headings but we can actually start putting these into play and start working on them and start helping you build the businesses in, in a way that you want. Now the way that this all flows through and all works, it all stems really in, in our view from cloud accounting or online accounting for the want of a better word. So first of all, you need to be on top of your numbers to give you the information you need for better decision making or better analytics or better information that you need within the business. And this isn't a new thing anymore, I mean it's been around for quite a few years now but hasn't, um, and, and it's taken off in, a, in, in quite a big fashion at, at the moment. And it all stems from uh, the, the technological shift if you like. We're now in, a, in an age now where we're almost continually online. We're always attached to our tablets or mobile phones or we're crying out for a Wi-Fi signal or we get upset if we haven't got 4G coverage so we can't access our Twitter feeds or sport website or whatever you're, whatever you're looking at. So we're using our mobile devices more and more and more and, and things have moved on. We have this appetite now for instantaneous data or up-to-date data all the time. People read news now. In, in bite-sized snippets on Twitter or social media because society's moved on at pace and people are using technology to, to cram more into their lives. So things have actually moved on in, in the way technology has. Just using a, a couple of examples within industry, look at the way some of the other businesses out there have evolved due to technology shift. 
you look at the way Apple um, first of all developed iTunes. So no longer do people have to go to the record stores to buy vinyl sets or you know if you're not as old as that CDs. Um, and then people started downloading music. But now even that's out of date now and people are now streaming music on things like Spotify or Deezer or Apple Music. So again, a technological shift. Look at the way we watch television now. We things like Netflix, you're watching television on demand. So you're not waiting for a certain time every week to watch your favourite television programme. You can watch things when you want to see it because we wanna we have very much this now attitude, whereas we want something, we want it now. And that can now apply to finance as well. But I think the difference is people don't necessarily expect to see innovation in the accountancy sector, do they, Darren? No, it's, it's, it's probably no. the last bas it's the last bastion of where they would see <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the innovative, absolutely. Yeah, yeah so. But yeah, you know, another example, you know, look at Uber, you know, the largest taxi company in the world arguably has no cars, or Airbnb, which is accommodation booking. All these technolo technological companies are, are, are changing the landscape for the way society operates. And you've probably you've probably all seen it in, within your own industries as well. So in terms I of accounts, yeah, yeah go on, sorry. The one thing I think is really important there, I think it's, it's it can be. I think it's, it puts it puts some context around it. Is I think what we see we've seen through Apple, through the use of iTunes, Netflix, Uber. Airbnb, um, Instagram, others is, and I think you know, obviously others have, have spoken about this, and I think it's very relevant. Is it's it's very much a disruptive service, and the the challenge with a disruptive service is adoption, um, and we're seeing some interesting things. And I think that the thing for, for businesses is to really have an understanding of what does that disruption mean for them, because I think you can talk about the the, the greatness and how awesome these things are, but I think sometimes you have to reflect backwards on. What has that meant for the incumbents in those industries now that that disruption has arrived? And where has it left the consumer of those? And I think that's, that's the interesting thing there that needs to, needs to probably, probably just be mentioned. If you look at um, Airbnb, you know, they're, they're decimating um, the, the traditional hotel booking industry. If you look at Instagram, they've pretty much destroyed now through the use of, of apps, things like Kodak. Um, Netflix has pretty much demolished the the old adage, and I can still remember. I'm old enough, bless me, to be able to still talk about Blockbuster and going to Saturday, Blockbuster on a Saturday night to to run the video. But things like Netflix have disrupted that. Um, I think what it's, it really means is this: this, this there's a, it isn't just a wave of change. I think sometimes I've heard people talk about it as a tsunami of change, um, yeah, and it is very much. A, I think it's very much now a case of businesses if they haven't got this strategy, which they need to have this very quickly as a strategy because that wave is coming. And, and this oh, is something their competitors will be taking advantage of. Yeah, totally. Um, but then, as I say, this is happening in uh, the accounts and finance industry as well. And as I say, people don't necessarily expect to see innovation in accountancy. Um, I mean, if you just relate back to that, I mean, in the past, I mean, for, for, for a lot of clients, the only reason they have accounts prepared was just merely to complete government requirements. So they need a tax return filing, or any of their accounts filed at company's house, or revenue customs want their um, company return. And because it was just done merely to complete a government requirement, quite often things get left to the last minute. Um, you think, oh, I've got to get my accounts in, or oh, I've got to get my tax return, in, only because there was a government deadline. So as a result of that sort of mentality, accounts quite often were prepared several months after the year end. And all it does is bring bad news. So all you do is find out how much tax you've got to pay and a big or small, whichever way you are, hefty accountant's bill. So it's never good news. Um, so people just put it off to the last possible moment. And because that data was so old and so historic, that isn't an ideal basis for forming your um, financial decisions because the data's so old. I mean, even now we've got people, you know, clients, you know, they'll base business decisions on a gut feel or, or, or what's in the bank. But we're now in an age where, you know, we, we can work in real time due to the technology and actually show you the impact of a, of a business decision before you make it. And I think that's quite a powerful thing to be able to do. 
and the clients that we're working with with, with these methodologies is much rather focus on the future than focusing in the past. And I think Darren mentioned it earlier about the analogy with looking in the rearview mirror. And I think that's um, I think that rings true with a lot of clients that we're working with in in this in this manner. But you might ask yourself, is it a fad? Um, again, within our own industries, we've all seen the the next big thing come and go, and it just fizzles out. This sort of technology that we're talking about today and the tools that we're talking about today are here to stay um, because although primarily the tools that are out there for, for small businesses have been developed for the small businesses owners to take advantage of, the government are now using similar technology and, um, to help them with the digitalization of tax returns. And you might have seen in the budget or various statements that proposals are now underway for the digitalization of these returns. And the government are taking it really seriously. They're, I think they're investing something like 1.2, 1.3 billion on making it the most uh, digitally advanced tax administration in the world. So they're really kicking in with this. Um, and it, I think the proposal suggests that this might be coming in as early as next year. Um, whether, whether that's changed or whether that will be changed remains to be seen, but it's certainly on the government's roadmap. Um, any thoughts on that one, Darren? Um, no, but I, th I think again it, it shows that the demand for all government services, irrespective of whether it's tax returns, we've seen this happen with um, applying for tax discs and licenses and passports and all government services moving to online. Um, I think it's, this, this is just a natural uh, progression to that. I think, but the impact that can have for your clients is immense. It's it's much more around data. We've seen that happen with um, payroll information, Richard. Yep. Being been going online, I think we'll see more of this. We, I think it also it, it allows us to have much more transparency uh, around what's going on. It's allowing your clients to, to, to physically see what their, their, their tax liabilities are. Um, but I also think that the importance here is not to forget the important role that the accountants play in that process. Um, you know, I, I would always still say that you know it's possible for people to go and do their own self-assessment, but I wouldn't do that because I know that if I come to you, you're going to probably help me mitigate and, and reduce my tax liability. So I think there's, there's still that demand, um, but it is about more transparency, and I think we'll see more of this happening. But again, the key, I think, paradigm here is, is about real-time information, giving you that knowledge of what's going on. Um, so you can make better decisions. I think that's ultimately what's going on. I think the, the, the deadline to have this done is by 2020. Yeah, I think that was, that was initially first banded, wasn't it? But whether that's going to shift, we, we, we shall see. We shall well, see. I think, I, I think there's, there's other things they're going to focus on as well with, with things like Brexit and, and everything else that's going on at the moment. Yeah, I've yeah, got that. I haven't got a lot to do at the moment, so I might as well push on with this. <laughs> no, absolutely. Carry on. <laughs> but I think it, it is really important. I think it is. It, it's not just about that. There's also going to be a lot more other services. I think, again, your clients are going to see this through technology, the better use of banks and, and the way that we, you know, there's a project underway with banking at the moment. To, to kind of you know, look at simplification of, of, of a lot of their data and, and have that more seamless and more transparent across multiple platforms because they've all been built on different systems. So there's lots of work behind the scenes about you know, coming up with a single schema um, around that, which, which would make it a whole heap easier. But your clients are going to benefit from that because once that's available, you're moving into a banking 3.0 level at that point. Um, so innovation is constantly going to keep up with this. Um, and I would say sometimes ahead of it, so your clients, and I think we have a duty of care to your customers and beyond to, to keep them aware of what those updates are. I think you know, you're doing a fantastic job of doing that, but it'll be interesting to see what happens over the next few months and years on the digital tax accounts. Yeah, agreed. And I suppose the, fir the first part of the jigsaw with all of this is just moving on to an online cloud accounting solution. Absolutely. Because um, we, we keep referring to real-time data, but you can't really work in real-time data unless in a lot of circumstances you change the way you run your accounts. So the offering that we have, we, 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 we partner with Xero, who we think are the, are the leading cloud accounting software out there. Um, they've now got over 700,000 subscribers worldwide and I think in the UK they're now up to around 130,000. So that they're, they're growing at a far pace. And I know when, when, when Early days in the UK was here. I know Darren was a was a part of what was going on there. So again, you 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 must have seen you know the growth curve when it started off at eight employees in 2012 through to however many employees they got now. 
the actual appetite for this sort of software is, is just increasing all the time. Uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. I, I, I can fondly remember working with a team of six um, that then rapidly expanded to a team of eight. Uh, and then, then <laughs> before, before you know it, um, we're, we're now staring down the barrel of 120 employees plus. Um, and that's yeah. when I left. So it's, it's gone beyond that now. Um, and it's, 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 a, it's been amazing to see the adoption of, of such a, a cool tool. Um, and I say that with a smile on my face because I think one of the things that I was really proud of was just to see that transition from, from desktop to cloud and what it meant for small business owners, but more so what it actually meant in terms of you guys as advisors now and the ability to have a much closer relationship and, and work better and smarter with your clients. And I think that's, that's the paradigm shift that we've seen and that's, that's been amazing. And just the ability for small business owners finally to, to be able to grasp their, 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 you know, what's going on with the numbers, um, to easily process data through a system that you know, didn't rely on them understanding the, the, the rules of double entry bookkeeping um, like other systems was, was just amazing. And then to, to add on the fact that you can now use your mobile to do a lot of this stuff on the go was just it, tremendous. No, I totally agree. I mean, that's I mean part of the reason why we are happy to recommend this solution to our clients is, whereas accountancy software in the past has been written for accountants essentially, because as Darren referred to, a lot of it's double entry bookkeeping and and terminology that only accountants can understand. Whereas Zero has been designed for the business owner, so it's all written and it's easy to navigate. You see, some of the accountancy work's done in the background, so it's just using a system rather than having accountancy knowledge, which which is far more beneficial to business owners rather than just knocking out your numbers. So you can actually, as I say, it was designed for business owners rather than accountants. And again, because it is in the cloud, it enables us to collaborate with you. So if you, we, we can work on the same data, we can help you, we can advise you, and it it just brings you up in you know, so your account your accountancy financial data is up to date more often than not. Um, so it is of a, a massive benefit. So the the zero puts you back in control, but it's just a beginning. Um, as I say, previously a lot of clients, you get your accountant done once a year. As a result, the information, you're always behind and you never quite know where you're at. So the way the whole zero mechanism works is that, okay, zero is um, the financial hub, um, but there's lots of integrations. There's over 500 different software applications or in the zero ecosystem, they're called add-ons, which all integrate into zero. Um, so what we've done, we've identified uh, three of the most effective integrations and developed a proposition, a, a new product called the zero trifecta. So what that basically means is, we've, we're using zero at the heart, we've plugged in um, three different areas which all business owners have struggled with in the past. I mean, we've worked for small businesses for a, a long, long time now and they've always had the same issues. So we've tried to uh, put in some add-ons or integrations that help small business owners save time, to help them get paid faster. So again, we can integrate a, a tool to, to act as a, a credit control system. The time element is um, a tool that we can use a, a data extraction to help you with your data entry so you don't have to input purchase invoices, which takes time and is tedious, so we can take a lot of pain away there. We can help you get paid faster, so that improves cash flow, which small businesses struggle with. And where Darren and Spotlight Reporting come in is the control element of the, of the zero trifecta. And that's the tool to give you the, the supreme business intelligence, the information that you need to, to prosper and grow and, and help you on your business journey. And again, in the past, when, you, when you're trying to use software, in, in the past, it's all been very expensive, so you could spend several hundreds or at times thousands of pounds on a piece of software, whereas a lot of these tools now, they're all very much monthly, sub monthly subscriptions. So the first time ever, I feel, that we can deliver this sort of um, offering at an at, at affordable level, probably for the first time ever, to help small businesses with the three main issues. Okay, but once you've got the tools, that doesn't solve the problems because, okay, you've got a better system to be able to, to tackle your core issues, but you still need to have that systematic approach and you still need the insight and experience that your advisor um, can give you. The software alone doesn't solve your issues. They're just the tools we can use to help you and, and keep you better informed and, and, to, and to help you on your way. 
So again, I mentioned that um, there's over 500 different software applications um, that plug into Xero. I mean, just by way of example, here's a, here's a few here. Um, you've got Rocket Spark, which is uh, websites or e-commerce, which integrates into your Xero accountancy platform. Um, iZettle is another another popular one. Quite often, you see market traders these days with uh, um, little gadgets that plug into the bottom of their phones. Well, these are actually credit card readers, so you can take credit card payments on your mobile phone, and again, that'll all push through um, into Xero as well. So there's lots and lots and lots of um, tools which you can build a bespoke business system. So Xero is just the beginning, and the trifecta then comes next, and then you can start building all these apps around it. I mean, one analogy I heard, it's a bit like having an iPhone. Okay, an iPhone's great when you buy it because, okay, you can make calls, you can send, you can send text messages, you can do emails, but it becomes far more powerful when you start installing all the various apps. It becomes a far more much powerful tool, and I think the same applies with uh, with Zero and the and Zero and the add-ons. And is there any add-ons in particular that you like, Darren? Um, I think that, again, you know, you've got to look at the, the the clients that you're working with, and the clients that they have. Um, I think there are there's some fundamentals that all businesses should have um, within them. I think zero obviously should be the the core of that. I then think um, businesses should have receipt bank because uh, we, we you know how many times I've done it myself. How many times have we incurred expenses in the daily running of our, our jobs, our duties for that business? Um, I'm sure some of you listeners have, and, and on the webinar have, have done this as well as I have. End of the day, end of the week, you open up your wallet and it's just literally stuffed with bits of paper. And at some point, you, you know, you always say, "In some point in the future, I'll deal with them and I'll get them processed." Um, you know, just the, the the one thing we carry with us all the time is a phone. I mean, the ability just to take a photograph of those receipts, upload it, and have that push that information directly into Zero just saves so much time. Um, I also think businesses need to to look at the ways, and there's such a huge. Um, uh, discussion around this at the moment in the media. You've only got to go on to Twitter and the social media stuff to see the stuff around late payments. And I think again, businesses are leaving so much money on the table potentially that they need to look at the way that they can get their debts in quicker. So anything that can help them chase that money in quicker is is is, is a must. Uh, and therefore, I think the service that you guys provide around Chaser and, and getting that money in quicker is, is, is brilliant. Um, anyone who's in a retail environment and wants to take car payments, again, they can do that through tools like iZettle. I think that's a fantastic little tool. But I often hear about businesses as well wanting to look at often uh, offering their clients multiple mechanisms for payment. And I think Go Cardless is a really easy way that they can set that up so they can take car payments, they can set up direct debits. Again, just influencing that. But I think, I think it goes a little bit further than that as well, because obviously this isn't just a one thing that will, this is, that will solve a panacea of problems. I think there are also some issues that they can do within Xero. I mean, one of the things um, we used to talk about when I was at Xero was you know, changing your payment terms to influence your customers' payment habits. Uh, and there is some research that suggested, you know, if you look at small business terms, if you said it's 30 days, you would probably get paid on day 40, 44, something like that. By suddenly changing that to 13, and they did some research on, you know, if you said your, your payment terms were 13 days, you were much more likely to get paid within the 30-day period that you would originally offer them anyway. But it's, I think it's a combination of that. So there's some, so certainly some great ones there. Um, Rocket Spark, you mentioned now, I think, you know, any client of yours that wants to consider looking at a website that they can manage, Rocket Spark is a great way to do that. Um, Vend is a great, again, again in retail, a great uh, shop front. Uh, anyone who sells online should be looking at Shopify and things like Magento. Um, there, there's a whole ecosystem. One of the things you guys bring to the table is your knowledge of which, which products work well for the clients that you have. But certainly, I mean, I think there, there's, there's two or three that I would say are, are absolutely a must for any business. Um, yeah, of course, I would, I would say ourselves as well as part of that, but that, that will go through you. <laughs> yeah. So of course, with the just to let our audience know, on the time element, that's the receipt bank one, and and the cash one is the chaser. So I've I've also done uh, webinars recently with Alex Clark from Receipt Bank and David Tuck, who's the CEO CEO of Chaser. So if you want to see web recordings of those webinars, then by all means drop me an email. I think my email address is on a slide later on. So if you want those, then drop me an email. I'll be happy uh, to send you a link to those webinars as well. So just moving on, so we'll just do a quick poll just before we look at what we can do in terms of um, spotlight reports and we'll just do a quick poll. So if everyone could just um, 
put in what the biggest challenge in their business is today. Debbie, I don't know if we can get the poll up. Is that possible? So I think the, the choices we've got are cash, control, time, or other. So it'll be quite interesting to see. Maybe if it's if it's other as well, Richard, what the, the delegates could do is just drop into the chat box what that is. Yeah, that'd be interesting to see. Okay, so that's interesting. You'll be pleased to see that one, Darren. It looks like well, about 80% eight, 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 of putting control. <laughs> Which is the spot oh, that's, that's, me the, that's, me, that, that's me pressing the button about seven times. Hey, have you done it? That's, that's you, isn't it? But, but that, that's great to see, actually, because that means that you know what what um, people have come in to join today's webinars for is to actually find out about that element. So yeah. that's good to see that um, they want better control over their financials. So that, that's excellent to see. What what I also say is is maybe at the end is 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 it would be interesting to kind of for you I think to just maybe understand what your the attendees goals are over the next three months six months and 12 months what's the one thing they want to change in that time frame and i think that would yeah. be really interesting for them to, to if, if they wouldn't mind sharing that with you i think that, that would be really interesting for you to get a handle on that yeah it'd be good to see and as i think on, on a later story i have my email address on there so we'll, uh, we'll we'll mention that again towards the yeah. end just so just to remind people that to, to send their thoughts on that across that would be really interesting to see um, yeah, so why use software? I mean, I suppose it's just the, evol the evolving of accounting in a way. Um, and, 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 you know, we talked about the shift in technology a little bit earlier, but in terms of accounting, you know, you've gone from Guildhall handwritten ledger books to Excel spreadsheets, things change. So the thing is now the software there can do so much of the heavy lifting for you. So you don't have to spend your Sunday afternoons doing your bookkeeping, you don't have to spend days on the phone chasing in your money, you can use a software to, to help you with this so you can focus on what's important in your business and use the sorts of reports that we can help you with to actually focus on the how, why and what um, and spend a bit of time working on the business and make your business more, efficiency, more efficient by using the software that's now available. So just looking at Spotlight in a bit more depth now, these are the sorts of things that we can, uh, that we can send out and that we do send out to our clients. So this is a very simple monthly health check, um, which we can we send out to clients of any size. The one thing that stri strikes me about it is just the visual aspect. So it's very easy to see, without looking at sheets and sheets of numbers, how the business is performing, the three key metrics there of revenue, profit, cash. And the visual aspect, just, it just brings it a little bit to life. So that, that's the simple monthly health check that we, you know, clients of any size can receive that one. And that, that was a popular one, isn't it, Darren, the, health, the monthly it, it health is, I, I think there's two sides to that. If you look at just a couple of the points on the left-hand side of that slide, I think you've got two, side, two sides here. One is the stuff that's really important for the client, and on the right-hand side, you've, you've got kind of the benefit that this gives you as the advisor working with the client, and I think gives them comfort that you can do this. So one is that we can actually look at month-by-month -month results, and, and we can also change that view very in, in, you know, instantaneously to look at this month versus this month last year. So we could be having, I'll be honest, we could be having a month that isn't as good as last month, but compared to this month last year, if there were seasonal trends, we could actually be up on last month, last year, this time last year. Um, and overall, compared to a, a yearly budget, we could actually still be on track to hit the yearly budget. So, you know, once one swallow doesn't make a summer, but we can actually put that into perspective for our clients. So we're actually giving them and I think highlighting what's really important, but they don't then need to go into the finer detail. This is really just giving very high level to board, to stakeholders, this is how the business has performed this month versus last month. Ironically, obviously, I don't want to kind of steal your thunder, but we don't just have to measure um, financial data. This could be, um, for example, systems or processes or strategy. Um, this is about, again, as we've said before, you as the advisor having a much more deeper understanding of your client's business and them working more closely with you to enable you to, to drive those outcomes. And I think the key thing here is, this is what I meant by being more proactive, is the, the, the challenge that we have is how can we be proactive to the point where we can spot 
trends happening. And that's really important. So if we're seeing those numbers um, move towards the negative side month on month, we can step in and do something about it. We can highlight that to the client. We can follow up with the client and say, hey, we, we can see a trend appearing here. And, and actually, we can probably step in and intervene before it becomes an issue. Ultimately, as you've, if you've, as you've switched the slide, it kind of leads us to then say, well, if we need to go deeper, we can expand that view. We can have a look at much more detail. We can look at this over a longer period of time as opposed to just monthly. But what we can also do now is measure in the pane. So if you look at each of those windows on that, on that screen, we can pick the right metrics that we measure. And again, one of the questions you asked at the beginning, why use software? And my answer to that is because the fag packets are getting smaller. We can't write, the, we can't write this stuff down on, on those pieces of paper and just stuff it in the back pocket anymore. You know, what we want to do is design a tool that is absolutely about collaboration between you and the client. <clears throat> Measuring what matters, but also giving us the chance to challenge clients right, and for clients to be challenged on that. Why is that important? Why do you want to increase revenue? What's the impact of that? Is that across one particular product line or across all product lines? Do you, you see where that's going in terms of having a conversation about that? We have to put this into context. And I think that the challenge then is to deliver this to, uh, to those users with the right context, the right information at the device that they want. And this can be done through a PDF. You can email that to the client. You can send that to them so they can view it online. Or we can even view this on an iPad and have that information in front of us when we're on the move. And that's I think, is, the most, is, is a real powerful element to this. Yeah, and there's totally. lots of ways you can design the outputs to match what your clients want. Whether that's a, a, you know, a very simple dashboard with three metrics or a number of dashboard with six or more metrics on that. Yeah, and it's just giving it's just giving clients the information that they need to take action, or to discuss, or or just put some structures into place. I mean, the top right on there, you've got outstanding receivables. Okay, this month compared to last year, debt days have slipped by one month. Uh, yeah, absolutely. What are, reasons, what are the reasons behind that? I mean, okay, it's not dramatic, but uh, it, let, let's start tracking debt days to make sure that they're not slipping. You keep absolutely. on top of the cash. Absolutely, I think you know we we mentioned earlier about what add-ons we we we, want, we, we think are great. And I think Chaser would be a really good example of that. You know, if you know, if we said to a client, "Hey, you know, if we could reduce your debt a days, would that be something that was interesting?" The client said, "Yes." Then let's deploy Chaser on that. Um, let's see the impact. So pre, let's let's give a report that shows pre Chaser and then post Chaser. Yeah, very powerful. And then we, and then we can see the, the impact that's had. And I think that's, that is really really powerful for your clients. Yeah, and then the, these reports. I mean, just again to give you, you know, the business. In, just rattle through a few reports so you can see what they look like. Um, so I'm just conscious of the time. So you know, you got the business insight report, which you know, again, just gives you. We looked at that one earlier. We've got um, a tax planning dashboard, so we can start looking at your profit year to date v budget. Is it on track? Is it over the top? What can we do to help um, minimise your tax liabilities? What can we What can we do before that tax bill becomes, you know, too late to change? rather than let's sort out your tax bill after the horse is bolted. So let's start monitoring things as we go along rather than dealing with things in an historic way. Yeah. Some of the reports that we like working with with some, with some of the larger clients and some of the, the bigger clients is actually given some um, the figures because a lot of clients still do like seeing the figures but, but presented in, in, in such a way that we can put some um, eye-catching graphs underneath them as well. So again, you can start looking at, I mean, Darren mentioned seasonality, for instance. When you can, can start comparing this year compared to last year, and you can see the same trends or the same patterns, and you can start planning for those if you know that they're coming. So these sorts of things really help with the way that you view your business and the way you can plan and, as a result, forecast. Um, again, really important to see what's coming down the line. So let's start putting budgets in place. Let's start forecasting based on the budgets and the actuals and, and really start getting hold of this financial data to help you grow your businesses. So all these tools, all this zero and spotlight reports and the business intelligence tools and chase, we can increase your, we can increase efficiency, we can help you on your business, we can work more closely with you to help you achieve your your business and not, well, not just business, your lifestyle aspirations because if your dream is to have a yacht in the south of France then how are we going to do that? That's going to be generated by, that's going to be generated by the, the business performance. So let's start strategizing, let's start sharing our experience with you and, 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 and help you on your, on, your, on your way. And again it's important 
not to be not to be reflective and to be forward looking i mean we proactive is a word that okay arguably is used too too often because by nature what accountants do is can tend to be a little bit historic anyway but wouldn't clients much rather pay for helping accountants and advisors shape their future rather than reporting what's happened in the past um, and I think we're in, a, we're in an arena now, we're in an age now where that's more prevalent and, 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 and a, we're far better positioned to do that now with the technology that's available. And again, hope's not a method. I mean, so many, again, I mentioned earlier, people rely on what's in the bank or, or a gut feel, but relying on the bank is not a good indicator because you might owe out thousands. You might have tax bills you haven't um, accounted for. Um, you might be owed shed loads in. So the, the bank account, okay, it can be part of an indication of how the business is performing, but it doesn't give the full picture. So again, just holding your finger up in the air and see what happens isn't the best way of um, growing your business or running your business. So hope is not is not the method or the ideal method to use. And again, you've got far more chance of uh, being successful if you are forward focused. And again, those three slides there, measure, manage, forecast. Well, first of all, we, again, you can't manage what you can't measure. So first of all, we need to identify what you want to measure within your business. Let's look at some key performance indicators. Let's work out how you want to measure and let's work out how we're going to manage that and then compare and then just monitor the performance. And then we can put um, strategies in place if things are underperforming. We can build on it if they're performing. We can change things, but we can actually start really delving deep into the, into the business, into the key performance indicators to help you plan and as a result forecast moving forward. Okay, so step one, just just give me a call, speak to us about your business insight report. If you're on zero, all well and good because we we can we can, we, can, we can work we work well with zero. That's our our chosen tool, if you like. Um, so speak to us about that. And more importantly, as well, discuss your plans. Let's see if we can start putting some strategies in place to actually help you achieve your goals. So discuss that with us, and we, we'll gladly help. Just on those slides, we just rattle through fairly briefly. Darren, have you got anything to add on those? No, I, I, I think you've, you've covered off the, the, the kind of the, the, really the call to action for this is for the clients that you have, for anyone listening to this, seriously think about what it is you want to measure, but also think about you know your projections forward. Where do you want your business to go? What are your outcomes? What are your desires? Um, what does the future look like 12 months, two years from now? Um, what does that look and how how do you how do you see yourself getting there? How can you hold yourself accountable for some of the measures that go in there? Um, and talk about those with the team at Tyrrell. Um, they've got a wealth of experience of doing that, and they can really help you. Um, in some cases, you know, just just your business will take off like a rocket ship if you if you employ some of the strategies that they can they can help you with. And I think that's that's really important because once you have that, you can then measure it. We can enter into a, an ongoing dialogue with with you and, and the, the team and with your clients about how. You're performing against that again using that measurement of an after action report measure and address and change those outcomes that we're doing on that journey um, but I think it is it's, it's about having that real world holistic view um, as part of that process and I think you, you covered that off really well Richard thank you yeah okay so just again just to give another example of uh, an ex people who have using this sort of solution the zero trifecta solution um, we had a catering company um, and they had they had uh, four different outlets. So in the past they had all their figures, they were all al amalgamated into one profit and loss account. So it was very difficult to see um, which outlets were performing and which ones weren't. Um, so what we did, we implemented the zero trifecta and started using spotlight reports and we were able to track the four different outlets separately and report on those. And over time we identified that one of the outlets was underperforming well, it was actually due to wage costs because it was overstaffed. Now, if we didn't have this business intelligence tool in place, I'm not sure that, and again, unless it was a gut feel, unless it was a hunch, I'm not quite sure what systems people would have in place to actually identify that sort of problem. So, again, I'd ask yourselves, if that scenario was within your business, 
would you be in a position where you could identify that? So I'd, I'd, I'd probably ask yourself that question. Um, just to finish up, um, again, I've mentioned the zero trifecta. So again, the zero trifecta is there to, to solve headaches around time savings, cash collection, and specifically today, we're looking at the control element of the zero trifecta and actually getting a better grasp of your numbers. So if that's something that's, I'd be delighted to speak to anybody about that. So if you want to go to zero, 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 I've got zero on the brain, um, <laughs> www.zerotrifecta.com, within there you can book a 30 minute free um, chat with myself if there's any areas that you want to discuss in a, in a bit more depth. My email address is there, so richard at tyrrellandcompany.co.uk. So again, if there's anything you want from that, I, mean, I know I mentioned the webinar recordings from the previous ones I've done, if you want any of those. Um, and we also mentioned about um, asking yourself what you see as your business, um, the biggest challenge over the next three, six or 12 months. What plans do you have in place? You know, what, what would you think you might need help with, help with? Would that be cash flow? Could it be lead generation? Could it be staffing? Could it be um, website hits? So again, what do you see as your challenges? And if you, if you want to share those with me, and I'll be delighted to, 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 to see what people's thoughts are on that. Um, just before we finish up, Darren, have you got anything to add before we have a look to see if there's any questions? No, I've done, I, th I think that's good. Again, I would urge any of your clients who are on the webinar to, to book their free, their free trifecta session um, and get a, a better understanding of what this means holistically for their business um, and how that service that you guys can, can provide them um, can ultimately benefit them. Um, but if there are any questions, I'm more than happy to take them. Okay, so we'll just hang on and see if there's any questions after the webinar is finished. So if, if people need to shoot off because we've just gone past 11, then that's great. Um, if not, me and Darren will just hang around for a few minutes just to see if there's any further questions and we can deal with those. Um, so I'd just like to thank you all for attending today's webinar. Um, big thanks as well for Darren Glanville for, for joining today's webinar and sharing his wealth of experience and knowledge and know-how with us. So thank you ever so much, Darren. No, Richard, it's, it's been a pleasure, and, and, and ladies and gents, it's been, it's been a pleasure to, um, to be invited to talk to you this morning. I hope you, you've taken something from that, um, and if there are any questions, we'll be pleased to answer them, but uh, have a good day. Yeah, thanks very much, guys. Like I say, Darren and I will be hanging around for a few more minutes, so if there's any questions, by all means, just tap them in the question box and, and we'll answer those. Um, if not, we'll catch you next time. Thank you very much.